So when we were looking at the graphs on the previous page, we noticed that the domain specifically of a logarithm function, logarithmic function was from zero to infinity, not including zero, meaning we had to have a positive number inside of a logarithm. It doesn't make sense to take the log of a negative number. So in a problem where you're asked to determine the domain of a function, all you're really, all this is doing, this is a fancier way to actually ask, ask us to do a question that could have come from the last chapter, from chapter three. Because if I've got the log, and remember Ellen's just a log, the log of three minus x, to think about the domain is to say, I know that three minus x must be greater than zero, right? That needs to be a positive number, that's it. You're creating an inequality out of this question. And in fact, in some ways, you could think of these, these ideas, this question, as the reason we learned how to do the inequalities at the very end of chapter three in the three six. Now this is just a linear inequality. This is not as complex as the ones we were doing. I could just move the x on over to the other side. I would probably choose to rewrite it with the x first. So instead of three is greater than x, x is less than three. But that right there is telling you the values of x that would make this true, which means it's the value of that, values of x you could plug in there. So to be x is less than three, would be all the negative numbers up to three, but not including it. And there would be our interval notation for that domain. Now, the next one, this is definitely gonna be revisiting something from uh, chapter three, from three, six. Same setup, same idea. The log of this argument, we're gonna start with x squared minus four x minus 12 is greater than zero. You can hear that, that is uh, Sparky drinking some more water. And so this question, this inequality, we are not able to just solve this, right? That's what we learned back in 3.6. We can't work with this thing algebraically as is. Instead, we work with this polynomial and we find out where it is zero. So let's start with that. Let's step away from the inequality, although it will be important eventually. And let's ask that question. Where is it equal to zero? Now, in this case, this factor is very conveniently to x minus six and x plus two. So you get a six from that factor and a negative two from that factor. But then remember those two factors, when we do those two values, those two zeros, we put them on a number line. And then whether you use interval points, test sign, or you use end behavior multiplicity, that's up to you. But remember, this is a simple one. This is each factor only occurred once, right? So each of those is a multiplicity of one, each of those is a point where it does cross the x-axis, so I wanna put a point in there, as in those are those are dots where it hits. Um, but now, we also wanna remember, we don't actually want them. We only want where it's positive. So now that I've done that, I'm gonna actually revise that and make those open circles, because those are the points on the graph where it is zero. But we don't want those points. We only want the points where it's positive. Now, we can use the end behavior, just as a, as a review. We've got x squared with a one out front, positive one. So remember, even, an even lead coefficient, lead term rather, for positive x squared, that's gonna be even power, positive coefficient, so it should behave just like our normal x squared function. So it should be rising to the left and rising to the right, meaning it should be positive here and positive there, and with both of these being a multiplicity of one single factor, it should be crossing on both those places. So it should be negative down here. So we have, again, if you like drawing a sketch of the graph, you have a graph like that. And if you have a graph like that with those signs, now we go back to saying we wanna know where this function's positive. Positive is, you know, again, above the x-axis. So we have all the x's to the left of negative two, but stop there hop over to the other side of six and all the x's to the right of six. And so that is how we'd find the domain of this logarithm by creating that polynomial inequality and then going through our process from section three, six. All right, here at the bottom are the two things I've actually already mentioned a bit of, uh, but just a couple properties to go along with them to follow. We've mentioned the common logarithm where it's base 10. If you don't see the 10 there, then we know that's the base if we don't see a base. And we've also talked about the natural logarithm where ln is the notation used, which represents log base e. 
And so with these two very specific and very common bases, here's just a list of those four properties that we looked at on the previous page. Again, log base 10 of one will be zero, and log base 10 of 10 will be one. Just like here, ln of one, which is like log base e of one, will be zero, and ln of e, log base e of e, will be one. Then these two, log base 10 of 10 to the x, right? The bases match, so you get out the x. Just like ln is log base e of e to the x. So the e's bases match, so you get out the x. And then these two are the more, you know, convoluted looking ones with a logarithm up there in the exponent. But when you don't see the base, it's a 10. So there the bases match, you get 10. And ln is log base e. There the e's match, you get x. So I get all four properties from the previous page just specifically written out for the common log base 10 and the natural log base e. And then the very last thing here on the uh, in the section is calculating or estimating logarithms. Nothing more than making sure you got a calculator and typing this into your calculator here. Again, we don't do much with estimating, but just so you know how to use your calculator. If you've got your graphing calculator, it is as simple as just hitting the log button and then typing that number, 1857. It looks just like that. You hit enter, you get a decimal. So let's approximate that one to four places. 3.2688 would be the estimate. Now, I want to go ahead and show you with a non-graphing calculator. It depends on what kind you have. So for this one, this particular one, when I hit the log button, it again pops up log, log in the parentheses. So it worked the same. So for our next one, I could type 258 and then hit enter. If whenever you hit the log button, if you don't see this type of syntax or this notation on your calculator, then most likely your calculator, when you hit log, it takes the log of the number you have currently entered there. So <clears throat> for those calculators, you would actually type the number 0.258 first and then hit the logarithm button and it would immediately convert and tell you what the logarithm of the 0.258 was. So just be aware of which way your calculator needs that entered. Um, but this one was negative point five eight eight, and we'll round that three to a four. Now for LN, your calculator should have that as well. Uh, it should be right there under your E. There should be the LN button usually with the E as the, the shift of it. So you can use LN of the 3.592. And that gives us approximately 